In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating product lighting techniques to help you professionally light objects like this bag for example that has a leather texture, right here in Blender. Before we get started though, if you'd like to learn more about product lighting in Blender, be sure to check out 3D Product Lighting Mastery. It's a combination of theory together with workshops where you would learn the three key pillars of lighting. You learn during the workshops exactly how and when to use certain lights for certain objects. I'll teach you all you need to learn about product lighting. And the best part, I'll be continually adding new workshops to the course at no further cost attached to you. In addition to that, you will have access to the Studio Lights Premium Edition Known Group. I'll leave some information about that down below in the description if you want to check that out. Now that that's out of the way, let's get back to the video. When I look at this model, what I notice is in addition to the leather texture, we also have some gold reflective pieces here. So when I'm lighting, I have to light with this in mind. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to first add an HDRI. The reason I'm doing that is to fill the shadows so that it wouldn't be completely black. For example, if I go into rendered view, it's completely black, then the shadows will be completely black. So I already have Polyhaven set up in my asset library. I click on HDRIs and I will select this one, Abandoned Games Room 01. Let's drop that into the scene. Obviously, we don't want it so bright. Let's go to the World Properties and let's change the strength to something like minus 3. We have some light and we'll fill the shadows when I start adding lights. And there's a nice reflection here already. Now let's add our first light. I'm going to switch to the Asset Browser. I'm going to switch this asset browser to the node presets where I'll be using the Ultimate Studio Lights Premium Edition. Note you don't have to use this, you can use simply press Shift A and use the default light, area light. It will work just fine for this tutorial. I'm going to click here and drag and drag this light into the scene. Let's turn off the ray visibility of this world. So, in the world properties, we click this drop down and we turn off the ray visibility of the camera. Good. So we could simply focus on the bag. Right away you'll notice a problem. As I drop that light into the scene, if I scroll up, this is a leather texture. But you hardly see the leather texture here. Why? It's because of the size of the light and also the power, but mainly the size. If I go to the settings and I turn down, I want you to look here, look, look here carefully. And I'm going to change this size from 1 meter and change it to 0.5. Now look what happens. Right away, we could immediately see the text there. Of course, we have to change the brightness as well. But this is just to show one of the first things that you need to do when considering light in leather. The size of the light. So turn this power down to half and maybe raise it up a, a bit. In order to reveal texture, you have to put the light a little distance away and reduce the size of it. We get some nice highlights there right away. And there's even a nice highlight here. This is from the HDRI. Really nice. If we don't want that highlight from the HDRI, we could simply introduce a background. I already have it enabled here. This is just a simple cube where I deleted a few faces and I get a backdrop. What this is doing, this is simply blocking the HDRI. If I move this to the left, for example, you see the HDRI light in the side. This is simply blocking the angle of the HDRI light hitting here. Now that we have that, what we'll do next, under here is pretty dark. Let's focus on this side. We want to add a nice gradient light going across here. Select the light I have there, press Shift D, and I can press R to rotate, and put it just underneath there. Really nice. And now because this is a leather texture, you get that gradient. If it was a more shiny object, because of the light itself, you will hardly get that gradient. Let me show you, press rendered view here. Unless of course you're using the, the features of this strip box, where you could create these, these gradients. But you don't need that because of the object, because of the material here. Alright, I just wanted to show you that. Now that we have that, it's, it's already looking good. But there are a few other things that we need to do to make this look a little more professional. We want to add a nice little edge light there to light this side. And uh, we can't forget the shadows here. And also the gold metal pieces. And most importantly, the logo. This is not a close-up shot, but if you're rendering, for example, an up close shot then we'll have this to take this into consideration but i won't focus on that in this tutorial i'll simply focus on this view 
where we can get a really nice render to post on Instagram or to add to your portfolio. All right, so let's now focus on the edge here. This is gonna be pretty simple. Just click on that, that first one that we created here. Press Shift D. And we angle it this way. But this now is a bit too bright. So we're gonna press G and X and move it away. And if I turn the other two off, this is what we, it should look like. A nice little highlight there. Maybe I could decrease the size of this light. Maybe even more. Yes. With a nice highlight there. All right, if I turn this off, see what we have? Good. And it even lights the hand a little bit. So we have the main light. We could rename that main light. And then we have here, this is the, we could call this uh, the edge, edge light. And then this one we could call this bottom. So what we have so far is really nice. Let's focus now on the, the gold pieces. Now I'll be doing something a little different here. We're going to be using the light linking feature. So let's turn off these first, turn them off. And with this one, maybe we could use this one. All right, let's press, press one and press shift D. And let's go to side view. Let's press control three for the side view. And we could probably name this old lock. And we want to press R and X and rotate it. We want to, we want to light, we pay attention to this piece here. So turn off the main light, and you want to make sure that this is this is lit. And if it is with this, we're not getting it to light, it is because it is outside what we call the family of angles in product photography. Nevertheless, you can press 7 for top view, and we can rotate it until we get that angle. Very good. This is nice, but we don't want that bright highlight affecting the bag. So what we will do with this light selected, let's go to object properties and you'll see light linking. Click on new and this bag, it's handbag. What we could do, this is the main part, right? With our light selected, let's select the light again. We just drag, click and drag the main part into this collection here. And so now it's checked. So that means this light is lighting only the bag, but we want the opposite. So uncheck this. And now the light is lighting only the buckles and these are the gold pieces. So now when we enable, re-enable the bottom, the edge and the main, see what we get? Nice lighting and we have the gold pieces. It's a bit too bright. So let's select that, go to the data properties and just turn on the brightness, probably like about two. Just there. Let's turn off these again just to see what we're working with. And this is lighting really nice now we could leave this just like this or we could even introduce another light if we want to fill these shadows just a bit so let's do that just a bit let's again select the main one and press shift d and press r rotate it just around here and let's turn off the other light so we'll see what we're doing this one we don't want it as bright because if we go to the up close render You'll notice that if we have the main one enabled and the other, this other one here, then they're competing for each other. We want one to be brighter than the other one. So this is the, the other one. Let me just press F2 and name this fill, for example. All right. And so we want this to be much slower. Let's, let's, let's go to one, first of all. Let's turn off the main and the fill and then see what we're doing. So we really just slightly fill in, fill in the shadows there. And what we could do for final control, we could press GX, move it closer to our way. But we want to leave it right there. Let's enable the main once again and see what we're working with. This is important too, especially when we're dealing with close-up renders. But right now, for now, we're dealing with the other focal length. So that is not as important as the close-up render for now. So let's re-enable the lights and see what we're working with. So we have our nice bottom gradient. We have a nice little edge light on the side there. We also have that the gold lock light really nice detail and as easy as that we have a nice professional looking render and if we zoom up we will notice that we we have preserved the details of the letter because we have taken into account the size of the light and also the brightness and also to the entire bag is lit properly there's no panels totally in the dark of course there are some renders that you maybe want that but typically when you're doing product photography you want to properly light the bag, but it has to be nice highlights and shadows, nice fall off, and you have to maintain the texture. And of course, you have to pay attention to the logo. 
but that is for another video. And that's pretty much it. And then we press F12 to render. And that is how you professionally light bags with this leather texture. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And as usual, I hope you learned something and I'll see you soon.